Phyllis Y. Whitley. If you have been spiritually victimized or traumatized, welcome to Spiritology Live, where I bring my number one Amazon bestseller book to life. Each episode will be a raw, spiritual, metaphysical, holistic space of consciousness for self-healing. As you learn how to break your religious shackles so you can master and manifest your promised land within today. Let's go. Hello, 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 hello. I hope everybody's having a great week. Well, we had a dynamic guests on in the last episode and her name was Regina Brown and she came to give us some truth about what she went through when she first heard about the label that the medical community put on her son it was great if you missed it look for it Also, the book is available on Amazon, but we're going to go into something different this week. This week is going to be a little tight, so hold on. If you can't handle it, this message, you're going to have to get out of my kitchen right now. So let's let's see what we're going to talk about. It's coming from chapter four called Broke. We're going to go ahead and look at being spiritual we victimize in this chapter. I can go deeper than that, but I think you know what I'm talking about. I think I know, I think you know what I mean by that. This is for people who I don't want to say really consider themselves very religious. Or people who you might want to say um, is really heavily into some type of religion. And the reason why I say that because if I just said church goers, some people who go to church just to go, they feel like they are cleaned out and they live like the devil during the other days. And then when they walk in Sunday and they feel because they heard the preachers go and open up this book that they never really opened up themselves. They feel like, okay, I got it. I'm I'm clean. I'm I'm good today. And they feel comfortable. But let's talk about the people. It might be some of them. The people who really get involved in the church community. The ones who are in the choir, the ones who are in the prayer team, the ones who are the Right under, probably under the pastor, the secretary, the administrative, the one who actually cooking in the kitchen. It depends on what type of church you have. The bigger the church is, the more rebellious seed is running around. I'm going to be very honest because it's, it's kind of hard for that pastor, a reverend, or evangelist to keep control Uh, so everybody can stay under their eyes and their vision of what they feel that God is calling them to to, to do and be. But what happened when you got the God daggone leader? Let's let let, let the leader, the leader, use their power, use their platform for the wrong power. Every time you look around, it's a scandal. I am... That's not my job to list all the scandals. They got people that do that. My job is to help you see it and release it so you can live in your promised land today. And you can't live in your promised land when you got all of these weeds growing in your yard. 
in your field which is your world do you understand what happens when your pastor or your deacon the leader of the usher board who was probably married let's say they married and they come to you even even as a young teenager and they come to you and you believe in them you believe in the word and you think they are the next best thing or connection to God and they want to be with you in an um, unappropriate way an unappropriate matter and they start making you feel guilty I know a lot of y'all say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me turn this up because I know this sound like me or it sound like somebody I know went through this. What happened? And then especially if that particular pastor is in a well-known church and very popular, what do you do if you feel, if you felt victim to their demands? What do you do? Who do you call? Who do you tell? Then you might be one of those, and I know because I'm a consultant, a spiritual counselor, a motor Vader, and I help a lot of people. I'm a mentor also. I'm a little bit of everything, so I don't even know why I'm sitting up there telling you that. The point is, is that I deal with different people. And it really comes down to mostly women's, but I deal with some men who have came to me and they was on the other side where they listened to that particular pastor telling that they was unhappy with their wife. I say wife. In some circumstances, they, they, they might as well say wife because they go on the bed with everybody in the pulpit, around the pulpit. With that being said, I have had these young ladies come to me in secrecy, and they was hurting. And um, they really was hurting because they was lied to, and they really felt that this man was not being treated right by the first lady, and that he promised them that he was going to get rid of her and then marry them, and then what happened? I heard this so many different times. What happened was he never did it. And then their relationship break or they just sat there for a long time and be the other woman. And to little Bessie Sue come in and she's like 10 years younger. And then he turned around and he started looking at her. But what happened when he started turning around and looking at the little Johnny? They have stuff out there like that. And before I wrote my book, I had got up because I look at the news just certain occasions, uh, election time. Sometimes I get into it to know what's going on. And then that's it. I don't look at it. I don't live by it. And, you know, I went through a whole bunch of stuff that was really research for my book and I was probably shocked because I didn't know what all the scandal was coming was going around especially from pastors that I was watching you know during the time the first time in my young adults of giving my life to Christ and you know what was going on scandal after scandal it was what you know it it it, it was similar to what the priest was doing but they was messing with females too. Well, Miss P, I thought you was here to talk about the gospel, the good news. Yes, I am. But I got to let you know what is real. And I got to keep it raw. People are hurting out there. And see, my job is to get you back to knowing who God is. Because God is the one that gives you your promised land. Some of y'all want the promised land and you don't want nothing attached to it. You think that you are the one who can go to the sun and move it in another direction. You think that you can make it light when it's dark outside. 
you are still connected to a higher being source. So in order for me to get you on the road of your promised land, you have to understand who actually created the promised land. <laughs> you don't believe me? Go into the Old Testament. Look, look what happened to the Israelites. You know they didn't they didn't um make it. Okay? And let me tell you, because of the seed, the seed I've been talking about for the last couple of months, this seed is in spiritual leaders. This seed is in not only pastors and reverends and evangelists and prophets, it's in that group right below them. And the pastor don't know what's going on because he don't have time. His his time should literally be with God. And he trusts these people. That's that's the con of having a very big, big, big church, a mega church. And then you turn around and um he's supposed to, you know as I said that he's supposed to be spending time with God, but he's not. It's gonna slip out. That seed is gonna get into him and it will slip out. Scandal after scandal. So, people are hurting. Females are hurting. Men are hurting. And you know what's going on? They don't want no parts of God. Because they feel that that was, they, that, that person who spiritually victimized them, abused them, who spiritually raped them, was connected to God. And they say, how could you let me do this? How could you let them do this to me? But let me tell you something. And I always say this. I'm not here to tell you and put the blame on those who, who are victims. But I'm here to teach those who have not been victimized or who have been victimized to not allow this to happen again. But how, Miss P, how did you do this? You got to not only know the manufacturer, book, study it. You better know the manufacturer himself. Because, I'm going to tell you something. You won't believe every word come out of a leader mouth. And I'm talking about a religious shackle leader. I don't want no letters telling me. I got the best pastor out there. And see, that's why... Those people who think that their pastor walk on water, they are the ones that when that scandal come out, they flip, go crazy, and you know who they hurt? They don't hurt nobody but themselves because that's what their seed wants you to do. And they say, I don't have nothing to do with God. <clears throat> they leave God. That's why I'm here, to bring you back to where you belong. Don't let one demonic seed Go into somebody, some spiritual leader who played the role correctly because they wanted to do that. God didn't tell them to do that. They wanted to do that. And they took that seed and let that seed marinate it and manifest. And then they went on and they tried to put that seed in everybody else. So it can multiply. Now, let me read this. 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit. What? But test the spirit. Say it again. But test the spirits. Whether they are of God, because many, how many? Many, that's a lot, false prophets have gone out into the world. You know what he's trying to tell you? Let me make it short. Many of those are carrying this rebellious seed. That was the Old Testament. No, this was in the New Testament. Well, I don't believe in the New Testament. We're good. That's great. I don't know why you on the you on my um, podcast. You don't need to be. Come back when you're ready for the truth.
Well, Miss P, I don't know if that was really, really nice. No, no, let me tell you what it was raw. It's people here that are hurting, and I want those people. I want those people because I want them to live in their promised land. I have been hurt many times from the church. But I'm talking about those people who have literally been raped spiritually. Okay? Do you understand that particular scripture was really saying they out there. They are out there. And you know where they live? I gave y'all a list last week. They live in all kind of high places and even lowly places. A lot of them live right in your living room, right in your household. How many people you know had a pastor as a father? And he was no good. And what I mean by that was the, the lifestyle was so strict that they couldn't do anything because everything they did was of the devil. And then to find out years later or maybe after your, your father died, who's a spiritual leader, to find out that he was sleeping with everything that, that can move. What, what do I say? Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of the, the, I always say this, pastor kids have a reputation of being the worst, but you you know you know what's there? It's the seed. If that seed can't get to the pastors, the head of the household, that seed is going to go straight to those kids. And a lot of times you see those kids acting up. It's because they really know what's going on in that household. They see their father or their mother preaching one minute and come home and be cursing them out. They see their father and them preaching or their mother. And in reality, that house is broken because that seed is going through that family and they don't even know how to get rid of it. Okay, so what do you do? You know it exists. Let's go on. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. John 10 27. That's the new King James um, version. I say it again. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Okay. You know what I'm trying to tell you right then and there? In order for you to have a relationship with anybody, you know how you have a relationship with somebody and you finish their sentence? You had to have a close knit tight bond with somebody in a physical room and you know how you just say oh my goodness I was just thinking about that you know how they call you and you just know so and so and so oh I know he would have said that you also know what they wouldn't have said this is the same thing that God wants you to know you hear my voice and you will know it so see, you have to know God when you go into an environment where spiritual leaders live and literally know that when they are telling you, I want to touch you here, I want to do this with you here, or she's not a good first lady. You know what I'm saying? They will tell you this, but you have to know that you know that you know. My father, mm -mm, my father wouldn't have said that. My supreme glory don't work like that. Go within your own self. Most people who have been victimized or raped, they'll tell you, listen, I knew it was wrong. I knew. Then you got those, some females just sit there and they wait. That seed is in some females and men. Males who sit in the church and they get in that church and they wait for the leader to fall. They wait because seed, recognize seed. A rebellious seed sees something. It might have been his old life and they say, I'm going to get him. That seed is working 24-7. That's why you better know. And when you do know, you got to go over and get that spiritual the spiritual side of you have to be nurtured 
You have to feed it. That's what my book is all about. Because if you can't feed the spiritual side of you, the self side of you, then the physical side, the flesh will take over and let and go running rampant. That's why you see people, they can't get enough of nothing. They said, I can't get enough. I, I got it. I'm going to eat into a bus. I can't get enough sex. I'm going to sleep with anything that move. And some of them sleep with it. So, listen, I wouldn't trust some of them in the graveyard. If they can get on that body, they would. But it'd be bones. I know that sounds nasty to y'all, but I'm tell you the, I'm gonna tell you the truth. You don't know that person down the street that looked like anybody and everything. How about the one who every time you turn around, they in and out of a relationship? They literally are saying, Hey, I gotta satisfy myself and I don't care how I do it. They don't even know that their flesh took over because they have no power in their spirit because they did not feed their spiritual man. Do you understand? Or should I say your spiritual self? That's where your manifestation comes from. So with that being said, when you have that relationship with him, then you will know. Don't let no one tell you. No spiritual leader tell you something that you know in your gut feeling that that don't sound right. Not even me. I mentor. I tell I tell my, my clients and stuff like that. I said, and my mentees, I said, let me tell you something. If I'm speaking some stuff backwards, you know what? You can you can replace me. It's sad. Now the other thing, we're gonna conclude. Why Miss P, I don't understand why is all the spirit and spirit and spirit. I understand because see the church don't teach you the spiritual side of yourself. They only tell you go pray, and even then they tell you to go pray in the natural. They don't teach you that side. So they weak, they fall pray, and then you get weak, and then the whole place. I I I seen so many different churches and all kind of stuff happen. But see the good news. Is that you can overcome. And I said that. Because God said he is within. That was last time. Last time we had a, a part my podcast. I do believe that I was discussing. What God was saying. You should overcome the world. Because greater is he that's in thee. Than he that's in the world. And that's who, he, who do you think he's talking about. He talking about within. And listen to this one. John 4.24 God is a spirit. Hello? God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hello? God is a what? He's a spirit. He's invisible. Uh, Listen, if he was made in his image, guess what? You got a spirit too. Don't believe the lies. You understand? Do you understand where I'm coming from? You need to know him. You need to feel him. Even if you can't see him. And you need to know that you know that you know that you know. Because this seed is running through this church community like mad. And see, when you know him and you connect with him, you won't, I'm not saying you wouldn't need a church, but isn't it something when the pandemic came, people had to learn a whole new way. And one of the ways that they had to learn, it was like a new world. They had to learn how to get that feeding or satisfaction of, of Sunday, waking up Sunday and you can't go out, but to go online and virtually hear their pastor or any other pastors. Now, all the other pastors who didn't believe in online, who didn't believe in virtue, they thought it was the devil, the computer's the devil. A lot of them are out of business. Uh, Some of them probably came back and they got the little community people, you know, those churches. But then, really, the ones who already had their networks, their virtual network already, 
online, they just went over there and then they just hit everything that they could. Every every uh, platform online. And they are doing even better because you can reach the world. So see, you have to, you can, you can, he said, come together because see, when you come together, you gather together and you encourage each other and comfort each other. But he ain't never said that you got to come together and start touching each other. He ain't never said that. I don't have nothing against you going to church and you meeting somebody and you just live have a, ha- happily ever after you get married. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those who have been victimized or traumatized because you, the leader, they had trust in the leader, the deacon, the uh, choir member, the choir leader, the prayer leader. They had so much tr- uh, trust in them. And then look what happened. The uh, apostle, the missionary person that's in charge of the missionary all all the titles you can think about that's why I wrote my book you know why because we got to get these we got to get this group out here this book have to get to that group has who has been fallen to the wrong prey and they need to know it so it won't happen to their kids and they need to know it won't happen to their community or their neighborhood And you better know him. But you got to get your spirit right in order to know the most powerful spirit that there is. And I'm going to um, go ahead and leave this with you. It's my meditation quote called, Sovereignty is living from your spiritual senses. And religion is living from your five senses. That is really deep. And we'll touch basis on that next time. Okay. I am so happy. I am so happy. I am so happy that thank you for coming into my space. Now go get your promised land. Please share on all social media platforms because I don't know who you know. Leave a manifesting review or testimony so others can reap their harvest. That's your that's your job. It's the blessings is not for you. It's for everybody that God tells you to go to. I didn't say the world, but to all of those that are led to you. Don't miss this opportunity to order your book. It's called Spiritology, and it's on Amazon. What's new? We talked about it last podcast. Ask Jalen. Number one Amazon new release. It's about an autistic boy who was labeled that. He's giving advice to the unique, the ones who just don't fit in your world. (laughs) Bully words, world. And also, I'm on YouTube. Go check me out. And I do relationship tips. It's called Whisper Talk. I'm out. Remember, if loving yourself is right, you don't.